Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to talk about taking a force which acts at some point A on an object, which then causes a torque or a moment at some other point, let's call it O or the origin, and then how we can represent that force by that force move to the origin acting at O in a couple or a moment. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. So here we have an object. We have three points identified on that object. Point A, which represents the origin. Point, I should say point O, which represents the origin. Point A, which represents the point at which the force acts. R is then the position vector from the origin to where the force acts. And we have another point here, O prime. And later on, we also want to represent the equivalent by moving the force to O prime and see what that looks like instead. Now, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and move the force over to the origin. How can we do that? We can't just move it because notice, this is the line of action of the force. And if we move this force to a different location, to a different line of action, we will cause a different torque to exist about point O. Matter of fact, if the, if the force is attached at point O, it will not cause a torque there at all. So how do we re represent that? We can do that by drawing two forces at the origin. We're going to add two forces. Let me move the O over here. We're going to add one force over here in this direction. Notice that is the exact same magnitude as this force, so we'll call it F in the same direction. We move it over here, but of course, when we add a force, we change the whole, the whole action here. What we're going to do is we're going to compensate by drawing an equivalent force in the opposite direction called a negative F. Now notice that since they're both at the pivot point, they will not cause a torque, they will not cause a moment, and since they're both equal and opposite in direction, they cancel each other out. So it's like adding a one and subtracting one without changing the algebraic expression. Here, by drawing two forces equal in magnitude and opposite in direction, oop, I should call it a negative F right here, we do not change anything. Now, notice that this F and this negative F cause a couple. And that couple will be two vectors that are distance d1 apart from one another. So let me draw d1 right here. So what I can do now is I can replace this f and this negative f by a couple acting anywhere. And for example, I can, act it, I can have it act at the origin. So that means I can replace this negative f by this positive by a couple. And let's say, let me use this green color right here. So here's the moment that is now representative of the couple of f and minus f at a distance d1 apart from one another. So in other words, I can say since this is the position vector from the point where negative f acts to the point where positive f acts, so this can now be represented by r cross f. So now we've replaced this f and this negative f by the couple m, and of course, I still have this positive F left over right here. So I have to draw that one as well. So let me draw this one right here. There's my positive F. And so what I can say is that this force right here acting at point A, about point O, causing a torque at point O, can be replaced by the same force moved to the origin and added to that the moment that this force causes. And so now we have a physical representation of a single force acting at A replaced by this equivalent force moved to the origin in a moment to compensate for the torque that I've lost. And so this is a physical representation of this one force. Now what's important is that the total force in the X and Y and Z direction cannot change. Notice since they have the same magnitude force acting in the same direction, the sum of the forces in the x, y, and z direction has not changed, and the torque caused by this force about point O has also not been eliminated because I've replaced it by the moment representing that torque. What if I move my force now from point A to this location? What happens now? Well, let's see here. Let me try to work on this one. So let's admit, let me use red. So I, again, I put my original force over this location right here, but now I want to move my force to this location. And notice that again, it's not in the same line of action. So I, I am going to need another moment to compensate for that. Also, what I can say is, notice that I've drawn the vector from O prime to ohm. I call that S. So I have an S vector. So I have an S vector right here. S vector. 
I have my original R vector and I have my R prime vector. Prime vector. And what I can do here is I can say, well, my R prime vector is equal to my R vector plus my F S vector. If I put my S vector over here and add the two together, I get the same vector. So that means that R prime is equal to R plus S. And I just noticed since I made that an R prime that I forgot the prime over here. So this should be an R prime, which is from O prime to A. The vector from O prime to A is R prime. The vector from O to A is simply R. And now coming back over here, what I want to do here is I want to now express the vector. And let me write down the f vector right here. So this was the f vector. And this is now going to be the f. Well, it's going to be the same vector, vector f, but moved to a different location. So it's going to have a different torque about 0.0 than this vector because they're not on the same line of action. Okay, starting with the original problem with the force over here, the moment that this force caused it at this location right here, just like what we did over here, the moment, and we'll call it moment about O prime, is equal to the position vector from O prime to where the force, where the force is acting, which is going to be R prime, multiplied, of course, via the vector product, times F. And notice that R prime can be written as R plus S. So this is going to be the quantity R, plus S multiplied times the force, which means we can write this as R cross F plus S cross F. Now R cross F, when we come back over here, that would be this position vector multiplied by that, which is the moment about point O. So the moment about point O is equal to R cross F which means we could take this quantity right here and plug it in for this portion right here. So it means this here is equal to this portion right here, which means we can write the moment about O prime as equal to R cross F, which is the moment about O, plus the cross product of S times F. So the S times F. So now we can conclude is that if we move the force to any other arbitrary point, in this case called O prime, we need to find the moment caused by this force about that point right here, so that we can do that by saying the moment about O prime is going to be the moment about O, the original origin, plus the position vector multiplied times the force. That gives us the new moment. Now, we don't know, of course, since we don't know the exact units or anything like that, we don't know what the direction of that moment is, but let's assume that that moment is now in this direction right here. So that would be the new moment about O prime. And that is now defined by this quantity right here, which is equal to this. And we can now say, and let me put a line around it. Well, we can now say that this representation of the force moved from A to a new location O prime and added that to the moment caused by this force at this location. This now is the equivalent to this situation right here. So, so now going back all the way to the beginning, we had a force acting on A. We want to know, we want to know the equivalent force when we move that force to this location and added a moment representing the torque caused by this force. So we know that this force is equivalent to this situation. And then if we want to move that force to any other point on the object, let's say O prime, any arbitrary point, we can say that this representation is exactly equal to this representation by taking the force, moving it to any arbitrary point, finding the new moment, which can be found by this equation right here. And so now what we have is we have a representation of this force, which is exactly equivalent to a force moved to the origin with the moment representing the torque caused by this force. And this is exactly equal, or we can say that this is exactly equal to this representation by taking the force moving into any arbitrary point on the object and then finding the moment caused by this force about that point. And so we can see that we can take any force acting on any object at any location and represent it by moving the force to any other point on the object by finding the moment caused by the force relative to that point and by moving the force to that location. 
So that's an interesting way of looking at the moment and resolving the, the force acting anywhere in the object to the force acting on a particular point, either the origin or any other point, and the moment caused by that force relative to that point. And that's how we resolve a force into another force at the origin or at any point on the object plus the moment caused by the force at that particular location. And that's how it's done.